Welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ. We're located in the Mansion Hill neighborhood of Newport, Kentucky. I'm Marty Westermeyer, the designated pulpit supply. We're glad you chose to be with us for our online worship today, and this week we are celebrating All Saints Day. So we're also doing communion, so you may want to gather some bread and juice to be available so that you can participate in that part of the service. It is our hope and prayer that you may be spiritually uplifted by God's word read and proclaimed, by the prayers and the liturgy, the gathering about the table for communion, and the music being offered by our musicians. It is my hope and prayer that you will be touched by and know God in significant ways. So let us be in worship together. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us bless the Lord at all times. We boast in the grace of our Lord. Let us praise the name of the Lord with heart and voice. Listen to the Lord who delivers us. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Look to the Lord who hears our cries and delivers us from all our fears. Happy and blessed are they who trust in the Lord. 
Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. Bless the Lord. Let us worship our God. Please join me in a prayer of adoration and confession. Eternal God of blessing and mercy, we praise you for your surprising and surpassing generosity to us and our world. Keep our hearts and minds fixed on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb who is our shepherd. Make us strong in the hope and promise that one day there will be no more hunger, thirst, tears, or suffering. Giving, give us courage to live generous and merciful lives now. Bless us as we serve and keep our faith centered on you during times of struggle. Most merciful God, we confess to you that many things in life tear us away from you. Too often our hearts are set on our own plans and desires, and we think we are self-sufficient. Too often we give in to pride and selfishness instead of walking humbly and faithfully with you. Too often we lack the courage and faith to endure hardship and even persecution for your sake and the sake of your neighbor. Forgive us, God, and create in us hearts that are centered in you and are ready to do your good will. Create in us hearts that show mercy to others, whatever the cost. Remind us of the good news that none of those who take refuge in you will be condemned. Let your spirit proclaim us that the Lamb is our shepherd and leads us to springs of the water of life. Amen. Hear the good news, sisters and brothers. John reminds us how our we are children of God. And when the great revelation occurs, we shall know ourselves as created in that divine image. As Christ sits at God's right hand and intercedes on our behalf, we have the hope that we are purified with such loving testimony and may dwell and the assurance of pardon that God gives us in Christ. Dearly beloved, believe the good news, for in Jesus Christ we are forgiven now and forever. Amen. for today is from the revelation of God revelation chapter 7 verses 9 through 17 after this I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the land robed in white with palm branches in their hands they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? Where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne 
will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Second scripture of the day is from the letters to the entire church. First John's chapter three, verses one through three. See that love, see what love the Father has given us, that we would be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do, do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For he will, we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Today as we come to God in prayer, on this day that we're remembering those who have gone before, let's open our minds and hearts as we pray to God. Blessing and honor and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and power and might be to you, O God, forever and ever. You have welcomed our elders into their heavenly dwelling places, and they now abide secure in the countenance of your love forever. We thank you for the memories of those who continue to comfort us. How thoughts of them will enter our stream of consciousness like serendipitous moments of grace that bring them close to us. And those moments remind us yet again of your assurance of eternal life through the living Christ, and teach us yet again how in life as in death we belong to you. We continue to hear their laughter, see the gleam in their eyes, and tell their stories we hold dear to us. We thank you that for them death is past and pain is ended, and their time is now your time, unbounded and unbridled by earthly fetters. As we continue our earthly journey, we thank you for the path they trod, how they made our sojourn one of sure footing, for their having walked this way before us. May we treasure the time they took with us and make our commitment to you a lasting tribute to the faith they taught to us. Help us now to impart their heritage to the generations that will come after us and thereby continue the lineage that you have nurtured throughout the years. 
we bring before you this day those thanksgivings and intercessions that lay upon our hearts. We pray for each of them in their need. May your Spirit's presence touch them, making them aware that they are not alone in their journey. In the name of Jesus, who hears our cries and answers them, we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My view of stewardship is more personal. Like Chuck, I remember a notepad on the kitchen table with bills that needed to be paid and St. John's was always on the list. At the time, I did not realize that was part of stewardship. Over the years, stewardship has been explained as a giving of our time, talents, and treasures. We have all been part of the giving of our time and talents in the food pantry, choir, teaching Sunday school, Bible study, fellowship events, as well as the many times we opened our doors to the community with fall festivals, Mansion Hill, Christmas tour. We also gave out treasures when money was requested for special projects in the church. But how do we do stewardship at this unprecedented time with COVID-19? Well, I am looking at how the church has blessed me over the years. In this sanctuary, I was confirmed. Dave and I were married. Our children were baptized and our daughter's funeral was here. Our son was married here and our grandchildren were baptized here. All of us have overwhelming blessings this church has given us that we hope might be passed on to others. So I am giving what I am able with a grateful heart for all the Lord and this church has given to me. May it be so with each of you. Thank you and God bless you all as you prayerfully consider stewardship this year.
As we come to God's word this day in the Gospel of Matthew, we were reading from the fifth chapter, the first 12 verses, the Beatitudes. Hear Matthew's words. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, the disciples came to him, and then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God bless this reading, hearing, and understanding of his holy word. What does it mean to celebrate All Saints Day? When we celebrate All Saints Day, we do not have in mind a short, approved list of especially holy people like superstars of the faith. But rather, as Martin Luther and other reformers held, we are speaking of all Christians as being saints. All Christians are saints, not because they're perfect, but rather because they have been made holy by God. And Luther points to this in his explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed in the small catechism, and he writes, that it is the Holy Spirit who made me holy and kept me into the true faith and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth. Holiness is a gift, and God's Spirit gives it in many ways, including that daily this Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sins. So today then is a day to remember and to honor all those ordinary Christians, those saints who have gone before us. It is also a day to include ourselves in this company of the saints. And there's a precedent for this. Paul, when he wrote a letter, would call his readers saints. So in the letter to the Ephesians, Paul writes, to the saints who are at Ephesus. And if you read further in the letter, and between the lines, it becomes clear that this community is less than perfect. There's disunity, there's practice of Gentile and pagan ways that are contrary to the Christian faith. And still they are saints by the grace of God in Jesus Christ, which brings them wholeness and new life. You may not know about the Ephesians, but they were quarreling. The the people in Corinth were arrogant, and yet Paul calls them saints. It might surprise you that you, too, are saints as well. But then, as we know, God is full of surprises. So we look at the Beatitudes that we heard in the gospel today, full of surprises, In this teaching sermon of Jesus, such unlikely people are listed as favored or blessed by God. So in the nine Beatitudes, we have poor, humble, mournful, gentle, trusting, and persecuted people who are lifted up as blessed. Really different from today, how we look at folks. None of these folks, those kind of people would have made it on a popular survivor show or a reality competition show or be the best chef or the best interior designer or whatever reality show you're watching. They aren't models of worldly success and power, but the power of God is at work in them and in their lives. So when we read the Beatitudes, what we get is a new vision, God's vision for this world and then for us. And each of these Beatitudes reveals God's power at work in our lives and in our world. And at the heart of each of these Beatitudes, we find righteousness and mercy. And these are the things that God desires for us and in us. And they are possible in our lives by the grace of God, no matter what our vocation or our work in life is. An unemployed person is capable of righteousness and mercy just as much as the CEO of a large corporation. A school crossing guard and a police sergeant are equally capable of righteousness and mercy. So it's important for us as saints to remember lest we think that God is not at work in our lives because God is. So what then is righteousness? It is to have a heart that is set on God and doing God's will. 
unless we turn this into a competition of who has the most dedication of faith, we need to go back to the reading. It is the poor in spirit. It is those who mourn. It is the meek. It is those who yearn for righteousness. It is those folks who will be blessed. So what is it about those particular people? All of them know that they are not righteous within themselves. They all know that they need God in their lives. Those who have few spiritual strengths, who grieve over suffering and sin, those who persist in gentleness rather than competition and selfish ambition, and finally those who yearn for God's will to be done, are focused not on themselves but on God. And they're not particularly successful people in, in relation to this world, but they still matter to God. Then what is mercy? Mercy grows out of setting one's heart on God. It is forgiving as we have been forgiven in Christ. It is that single-minded desire to live with affection and devotion to God's merciful purposes. It is being willing to make peace with others by including befriending, loving, instead of hating. And finally, it is to live this way even if it means we have to pay a price. Mercy persists in the face of persecution, whether that is simply being excluded by others or thought to be too generous or soft or being physically wounded and beaten down by others. But today, we give thanks for those people of the faith who have gone before we give thanks for the righteousness that we saw in their lives, and certainly not 100% of the time, but some of the time. And we thank God for those times when their heart was on God. It shone through their words. It shone through their actions. It shone through their relationship with us. But thanks be to God for just the opposite, for those times when they came up empty and they were poor in spirit and they were grieving over the suffering and the sin of this world. That can only point to God's grace. I think of the times when my parents had to bury their own parents or when family members have faced serious illness or when someone has lost a job. Thanks be to God for the people of faith who could be honest about their grief, about their limitations, and that they were willing in those low moments to seek and to trust God. We also give thanks for the mercy we receive through those who have gone before us, family, friends, co-workers, teachers, pastors, neighbors, all who have shown kindness and compassion even when we did not deserve it. And finally today, along with our prayers of thanks for those who have gone before, we pray too that the spirit of Christ and Christ's words may be at work in our lives. Whatever our vocation, whatever our work, we are receiving God's forgiveness and mercy. And that grace frees us to set our minds and hearts on God and leads us to be compassionate and merciful people. Thanks be to God for the saints of God. Amen. As we take time to gather about the table, O God of power and O God of peace, who feeds the hungry and calms the storm, it comforts the trembling. Call your children into your arms. Call your children to this table. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and sovereign of the universe. You have called the worlds into being, and by your appointment the seasons come and go. You bring forth bread from the earth, and you create the fruit of the vine. You have made us in your image, and give us dominion over the world. Earth has yielded its treasure, and from your hand we have received blessing on blessing. O oh God, we bless you for your boundless love and the redemption of the world by your Son, Jesus the Christ. And though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor. When he was hungry, he resisted the temptation to make the bread for himself, that he might be the bread of life for others. And when the multitudes were hungry, he fed them. He broke bread with those whom others scorned, but the greedy he drove out of the temple. On the night that Jesus offered himself up for us, he took the bread. And after giving thanks to God, he break it. He said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I want to 
the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks to God, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and many for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance. Powerful, peaceful God, breathe your spirit upon us and on these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body, one holy people, a bold and faithful people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, one with the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours everywhere, now and forevermore. Amen. These are the gifts of God, the people of God, all things are now ready. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ and the brokenness of our sisters and brothers throughout the world. Take and eat. cup which we give thanks is our sharing in the life of Jesus, given to us for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Our friends, take and drink. Let us pray. O oh God, by coming to your table, we receive more gifts than we deserve. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, through whom we receive life and in whom we are bound in covenant. Renew us so that we may willingly serve as Christ has served.
Today we heard the Beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew reminding us of how God's grace and righteousness and mercy comes to us. So as you journey in this week, remember those who have gone before, those who have touched your lives in significant ways. Continue to share the love that you have received from them through Jesus Christ our Lord with those who need to hear it. Let us go in the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you.